Right-click in a bin and select New Fusion Composition. Set the duration to 10 seconds. Drag and drop your Fusion Composition onto the timeline. Make sure your playhead is over the composition and go to the Fusion page. Here you will see just the media out node in the node tree. Drag on the following tools to the node tree. Render a 3D, this will take all 3D content, render it and allow it to be played in a 2D space back onto your timeline. Merge 3D, this brings all 3D elements together before being sent to the renderer. Camera 3D, this is the virtual 3D camera we will use in the 3D environment. Point light, a light for the 3D scene. Shape 3D, this will be a sphere which forms the basis of our globe. Flat earthers can stop following at this point. Image plane 3D, this will be used as a background to the scene. Connect all of these together as shown. Shape 3D, image plane 3D, camera and point light must be connected into the merge 3D node. Connect the merge 3D node to the renderer 3D node. And finally connect the renderer 3D node to the media out. One more thing we need is an image of a world map. I'm actually using an SVG, vector, file for this but you can use a PNG, JPEG if required. For JPEGs, PNGs etc you can just download the image and drag and drop straight onto the node tree. For SVG files you must go to Fusion, Import, SVG. You will receive a message about size, but leave this as default. This will show up on your node tree as a group, there is no need to expand or treat this differently from a normal image, media in node. Connect the SVG node group or media in node to the shape 3D. With shape 3D node selected press 2 on your keyboard to display this in viewer 2. Go to the inspector and change shape to sphere. You should now see a sphere shape wrapped in your image SVG file. Side note, there are different map projections. The file I downloaded, linked in the description, is specifically a Gauls Peters projection, but you could try others to see how they work out. Click on your Merge 3D node and press 1 to display in Viewer 1. You'll see all your 3D objects, but they will all be central at the point of origin and need to be adjusted. A good view to use for this is Quad View. On Viewer 1, right-click on the axis display on the bottom right corner of the display. Go to Views then Quad View. This will show the view from different angles, top, front, right and perspective. Go to the renderer 3D node press 2 to view it in viewer 2. Go to viewer 1 and look for one of the four views called right viewer. Use the handle to pull the camera back until you can see the whole globe in viewer 2. To make selection of objects easier, ensure that whichever object you want to move is selected in the node tree. I want to move the image plane, so I select the image plane node. Move the image plane in the opposite direction of the camera so it's behind the globe from the camera's perspective. With the image plane still selected go to the Transform tab in the inspector. Go to the scale and type in 10, adjust as necessary to fill the whole screen on your viewer too. Go to the Material tab and select a color if you wish. You could also download a Starfield image, or anything else, and have that as a background if you wanted to. Final position change is to select the point light and move it to be somewhere near the camera. We can adjust later as required. Go to the renderer 3D tool and enable lighting in the inspector. This will ensure everything connected is affected by the light from the point light. Go to the point light node and set the decay as linear in the inspector. Adjust the decay rate to your liking. Go to the start of the composition i.e. frame 0. Go to the shape 3D node and view the inspector. Go to the Transform tab. Under Rotation, set a keyframe against the Y-axis where the value is set to 0. Now go to the end of the composition and change the value to 359 degrees of rotation. There is a reason for not setting it to 360 which will become clear shortly. When you play back you should see your globe make a complete spin. To have the globe spin for longer there are two options. The first which is the easiest way is to return to the edit page and hold ALT to duplicate the fusion clip onto the timeline for however long you want it displayed, just continue to duplicate the fusion clip. The second is to return to the edit page and make the fusion clip as long as you need it to be. In this case I set it to 60 seconds duration. Now return to fusion, you will notice the rotation stops at 10 seconds where the final keyframe was added from before. Open the spline editor. Click the three dots in the spline editor and select show only selected tools. 
This just helps clean the view up if you have other animations and keyframes. In this example it's not an issue, but it is a useful tip to know about. Click the zoom to fit button and you should see the two keyframe positions representing the rotation animation you've put in place. Select both of those points by using your mouse or hitting Ctrl A to select all. Once selected, press the set loop button and you will see a dotted line extending from the keyframe in the spline editor showing repetition of the animation across the new length of the clip. You will see the rotation continue all the way to the end when you play back. Enjoy your spinning globe and then appreciate how bloody big the Pacific Ocean is. Please subscribe. If you enjoyed this, please comment if this was helpful and give it a thumbs up.